welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today's subject is tuning the fuel and ignition on the M130 GP Lite package. Okay, so we've gone through our setup and so forth which is in previous webinars and hopefully everything's wired and checked and so we're ready to start tuning. Just to cover off a couple of things quickly before we start, we need to make sure that we have a safe a fuel mixture aim table. So this fuel mixture aim or lambda aim table that you're going to put in here, it's not doesn't necessarily have to be the end uh, lambda that you're going to run because you can easily change that later. So after we get the whole engine tuned nicely, we'll um, aim for some nice safe lambdas. Then later on, once everything's sorted car's going well, driver's happy, you can then start to lean the engine up and simply by aiming for a different lambda in the fuel mixture aim table that will lean out the engine appropriately. Okay, so we definitely want to start on the more conservative side, especially if we're just learning. Right, so again, you should have all everything tested and, and uh, checked. So the process is we basically start the engine and warm it up and then start tuning the efficiency map. And you do that using the Q key, quick lambda, or page up and page down on the, on the keys to make the uh, number larger and smaller. And as soon as the engine's warmed up, you, you can also use closed loop fuel to do that as well. Right, so the idea is that we tune on site um, so I'll show you what that means shortly when we switch to uh, the live ECU. And effectively, once we get a bit of an efficiency map roughed in, we move to other, other parts of the tune, such as the ignition and boost control. So the process of tuning is kind of, you're going around in a loop. You, you get the fueling uh, in the ballpark of okay. If you do use closed loop, then you really don't need to get too carried away with uh, the efficiency map. As long as it's you know somewhat close or in the ballpark, the closed loop will keep it tidy for you while you go and concentrate on things like the ignition, as I said, fuel timing and boost control if it's a turbo. All right, so if you've got a reasonably obvious ignition map and no turbocharger, then your main task is going to be just tuning the efficiency map to start with. We've got things like idle control and so forth that we'll cover on a separate webinar. And this one's really just, just doing fuel and ignition. All right, let's switch over to the uh, live site and we'll cover off some of that stuff on the ECU. Right, so here we've got the ECU on this time, actually down on Motex engine dyno. And we've got actually the Boss's RB26 on the dyno for us to play with today. So we've set up a tune here that's uh, nice and rough. Uh, you can see we've got a not, uh, dead flat efficiency map. Just put some big numbers in. Um, you'll obviously try and do what you can to migrate in uh, another efficiency map of some of a similar engine but if you've done your setup right then an efficiency map of anything really uh, is going to be a good starting point numbers should be sort of between 40 50 60 at idle and then going up at peak torque somewhere hundreds to 110 120 so I'll just show you what I've done here We've just gone a big block of 120 up here to as a as a good safe starting point. I'm not going to tune the whole engine with you today. Just take you through a couple of things to uh, allow you to get the idea of what to do. So we're talking about the fuel mixture aim table here. So for this engine, it's actually on E85. So if you have a look here, we've, we're sort of we're plenty rich enough. Probably if this was on petrol, we would be looking around 0 0.85, 0 0.86 at one bar of boost, which is where we are there. Right, so that's safe enough um, for us to make a start. We've got all the other tables, fuel, fuel mixture aim tables, uh, the limit tables and so forth. See, here's the coolant temperature one. So anywhere where there's a two, um, if you've gone through our other webinars, you'll know that the ECU uses out of all of these fuel mixture aim tables, the one with the richest uh, aim lambda. So 
and you'll see here once we get to 120 degrees that we're forcing the engine to be at eight, uh, 0.82 and at 140 uh, 0.80 and I'll probably modify that down even lower okay so if the engine's getting hot you can force the the fuel mixture aim so if it's running closed loop or even if it's not the ECU will target um, and open the injectors longer to become richer when this table comes into play so all right uh, we're just doing fuel and ignition so the other thing we want to look at is a, a fairly conservative ignition map so put in the numbers that are appropriate to you again E85 on this engine we can have quite high numbers um, so that they're not exactly conservative but you'll start with something this is conservative for this fuel on a standard compression ratio engine every engine is different obviously I have actually got minus two degrees out on the ignition trims as well just to be safe all right so that's our pre our pre-start uh, checks and um, maybe I'll just take you through a little bit of tuning now we'll start the engine and you can see um, see some things working okay All right, so if you're in the luxury of a dyno, then um, then you can set your dyno to a, uh, a set speed. I'm going to go for two and a half now. Just waiting on the lambda to come on. And you'll see I've already got closed loop trim working. I'll take you through how to set that up. It's, it's really useful. All right, so the process says we're pushing the space bar, and you'll see over here what we're targeting here is for this green dot to be in the box. All right, so wherever my adjust side is, so wherever I click, in order to get the engine to that location, this, this dot here will tell you which way to go. So as you can see, if we want to get the, the dot in the middle of the target, the engine speed needs to go to the right. You can see here that the, um, this is where the engine is currently now. These are the target points for or the location of where the engine's running. So I would need the, to rev the engine up to get to that point. So I need to let the dyno, bring the dyno up to that site. And you see I'm a little high now. And so you'll see when we get to the box there, I just shot that. All right, our dyno's very lazy on the control at the moment. So, you can see if I look at the box for start, it's red and it's telling you you're not in the right place and this dot is above the target, so it means I need to close the throttle. So if we're closing the throttle, you see it come down and the dyno will back the brake off. Just right on the edge there. Oh, the control is awful. Once we get it in there, we can push Q and you'll see that it automatically is taking the closed loop trim out. Let me just show you what happened there. So we're pressing T there. And if we come back here, you'll see that we we're on our fuel mixture aim the whole time. And that's because the closed loop was working. All right, see it's pulling out 15% of fuel. All right, and the moment I press Q, the closed loop went to zero. So what it did was it tuned, tuned the site and took the, took the closed loop or the trim that was being used for closed loop out. All right, and now that site is correct. You see the, uh, there's been a change, which is why we've got a red diamond there and the um, black square or the black marker to say we were on site when we made that change and you can see here what that means is when this target is green we're on site so really the process without going through the whole thing is to um, is to go around your efficiency map at, at places where you can control and um, quick lambda it or adjust it by making the numbers bigger or smaller whichever ever suits your method. 
all right? And if you tune in closed loop, or sorry, if you dial in your closed loop, that makes it much easier. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll show you, I'll just do a quick ramp run. This isn't what you'd normally do when you're tuning, just to save you that basic uh, setup that you guys can do yourselves. But I just wanna show you a, a ramp run and how you can very quickly get the efficiency map in shape just with a few pulls on the dyno, just while we're in this part of the, of the uh, map. All right, so I'm pressing T again. Everything looks okay. I'm gonna set the dyno up to ramp here. And if you want to study, uh, we're going to have a boost, uh, we have a uh, boost control webinar. So we're just assuming that I've got that done and the boost's under control, which I've already checked. So again, just wanting to show you uh, another method of uh, tuning the efficiency map. So we're just gonna do, do a quick ramp. I'm gonna turn the pump on. Dino is in terrible shape at the moment. All right, so while I'm doing that, obviously I'm listening to the engine to make sure it's not knocking. I've got safe timing in. Uh, again, this isn't what we you would do. You wouldn't do a ramp run straight away, um, but we have uh, now some data that we can look at. I just want to show you how you can do quick lambda after the fact. All right, so what we can do is we go to, let's go to say our 7,000 RPM site. So we have 7,000 here. Let's get rid of the graph for a start. All right, so we're here at this location. If I click here, you can see it's on site. So I can just press Q while I'm paused here and the engine's just idling and apply. And that gives me a good number at that location. And at the time I can see my trim was 7% trimming out. All right, so now I just come back each 500 RPM, get it on site, press Q, and apply. Come back here, press Q, apply, and we'll just quickly go down here. Make sure it's, when I'm saying on site, this is where you're looking here, where the engine's running. So we're just going backwards in 500 RPM steps. See, we're at 5,000 here. Q, apply. I'm just pushing into there. Back to 4,450. Q, now obviously it helps if it's exactly on site. We're running up the 180 kPa row here. So I have the boost control already configured. Just wanting to show you how we can get things in shape. All right, so. Well, this is where we're accelerating through, so don't necessarily trust uh, it when it's changing quickly like that. So this side here is probably right, so Q. And we're gonna be able to guess what these other numbers are um, once we see what the shape looks like. All right, so click on here, go G. What I do is um, go to F6. Now, unfortunately, because we've got such high numbers here, what I can do is go like this, take all these numbers down so we can see our tune. There's our tune there. So you can see there's a, a shape appearing here where the where those dots are. These ones here are the, are the points which we've tuned. Okay. And we know that this one's not going to be too much different. So we can kind of get a bit of a shape in here based on what we've learned as tuners. All right, and we'll come back. These are the other sites that I didn't push Q on. But we'll just put some numbers in to start with. Okay, all right, so this shape, while it's not going to be perfect, just our first run and realistically we had a terrible map shape, uh, we can use this now for everywhere 
above uh, and below in in pressure and kPa and manifold pressure down to a, down to 100 kPa because around from 100 kPa up the efficiency should be relatively similar the butterfly should be open and so the efficiency will change depending on on your exhaust back pressure and things like that but uh, we can as a starting point grab that shape to start with. So if we've got that line, I can just hold down shift and grab that whole line there and go control C and then control V, control V, control V, control V. Go like that. And then do that to here like this as well. This is just getting us roughly in shape. All right. And because, you know, that was a, just a bit of a rough first pass over it, we can just take what we've got there. If the engine's relatively standard, then giving it a little bit of smoothing isn't going to hurt anything. All right, so control S gets rid of those curves. You can see our points which we hit with the, uh, the Q. So I'm just going to bring that up a bit like that. All right, okay. So F6, T, let's do that one more time and see how close we are. Okay, so if you're watching the fuel closed loop, you can see straight away we we're within 5%. I can actually pause it there and get rid of the battery voltage here, double clicking. I click here and push C for channels, the little channel um, screen tab view pops out and I'm just going to put closed, there we go, fuel closed loop, control bank, trim one, drop that down there. And here's our, uh, here's our pass through and you can see straight away, very, very close. Certainly from that point on, I wouldn't come back to this until we've sorted everything else, uh, the ignition and um, the boost control and so forth. So, right, so as the shape or the shape of the uh, map will change also proportional to the engine speed itself. So you'll get a hump in the map around peak torque. And as we roll past the peak torque point, then the efficiency map will roll over. So uh, we will end up with a shape that's looking something like this. So we're doing all of this work. And this, this same thing applies for just about every engine. So you end up with a similar shape map for just about all engines if you've got, again, injector cowls and things all lined up. If you don't have everything done, it doesn't mean that you can't tune the engine if you don't have the correct injector calibrations, things like that. It just means that you, you haven't got an expected shape, so you, you can't kind of predict a lot of what's going to happen. All right, so I'm just Pushing save there, control S. All right, so without going, again, going through the whole efficiency map, you get the idea, there's some of the tools you use. Let's flip back to the presentation and get to the next part. All right. Okay, so the closed loop fuel. So early on, if uh, once you've got the engine running, and before you do any serious work in the efficiency map, you want to configure the closed loop fuel. So you've got your Lambda to CAN module, the LTC conf configured and working. It's kind of hard if, to tune if you don't. And what we're looking at doing is having the computer keep the fueling right while you get the rest of the tuning sorted. Okay, so this is the, I'll just turn this engine off. It's a bit better. So here we are, if we're under engine systems workbook and across to the closed loop fuel worksheet. And there's a few parameters here to configure, not too many. 
the most of them are self-explanatory but the hardest one for people to understand is what's called the closed loop period so what this means is we need to tell the ecu effectively how far away the lambda sensor is from the engine so or at the response time so uh, when the engine oh sorry when the ecu makes a change say if the ecu sees that the uh, lambda is leaner than expected it adds uh, inject a pulse width to fix that if the closed loop period time is too short well the ecu reads the lambda reading before that lot of fuel has arrived and so it'll recorrect again so uh, it can if the if the reaction time or the the period time is is far too short the ecu can just keep adding fuel adding fuel adding fuel looking to fix the lean spot and then of course eventually uh, the lambda reads richer then richer and richer and then the ecu goes oh it's too rich so it pulls out fuel pulls out fuel pulls out fuel and it chases itself up and down and uh, you just yeah you don't get anywhere so the opposite is true of course if we have a really long uh, period time in here then it takes a long time at each point for the lambda to uh, the ecu to respond to the lambda deviation or the lambda error so long story short we to get a good result here we want to actually perform a calibration of this table now in the start files there'll be something reasonable but if you want it to work really well then i'll show you the process to calibrate it all right so there's probably an axis uh, channel name here that you're unfamiliar with and it's called exhaust mass flow so effectively that's the best way to judge uh, the response time and that's based on the on the flow of the exhaust gas now the ECU calculates that flow uh, depending on what it's uh, calculating inlet mass flow as which depends on the efficiency map none of it's too critical to getting where you need to be so other than I've got someone's paging someone um, all you need to do is configure the uh, configure up a table hold the engine at a particular mass flow and then make a step change in the fuel and measure that reaction time and that's the number we're going to enter in the table all right so here's a picture of what we're going to do we have our lambda that's nice and steady so we're running the engine at uh, at each point in the exhaust mass flow chart here which you'll see live and understand a bit more in a minute but we run the engine then we apply a trim to the fuel so an overall trim to the fuel so you'll see that trim apply here and then you'll see the lambda respond after the fact all right and then we can actually measure that time and then enter that time into the table right the easiest way to do this is to do it live so let's start the engine So the first point to do is our idle. So we come down to um, engine systems and closed loop fuel. All right, and maybe your particular setup hasn't got the fuel overall trim parameter on here. Not all our worksheets had that. It's something I added. I'll show you quickly how to do that. If you go to layouts, right click. It's already unlocked so you would unlock it there come in here right click properties not paying attention am I unlock actually locked it properties and then add and we would type fuel over all trim Okay, untick normal, and there's our fuel overall trim parameter. It's already there. We double click it, go OK, it'll turn up on your closed loop screen. All right. So the other parameters, we'll quickly go through them. Basically, this is when the closed loop turns on. That's when it 
uh, that's, it turns on above 500 RPM and turns on above 10 kPa. You enter your numbers in. And this is the amount of trim you allow uh, in the negative and positive side. Just get rid of that. So here we're allowing minus 30 when we're running and I'll monitor that's 30% of trim out to fix a rich mixture and 30% of trim in to uh, more fuel to fix a lean mixture. Now while we do this calibration, we should turn that off. All right, so I'm not sure that we can put zero here. Yes, we can. So what this means is that there'll be no trim allowed and then we'll see the response of the lambda without it being uh, fixed by the closed loop. All right, so the process is here. Again, we, um, we want to add and subtract fuel using our overall fuel trim and then measure the response time or how long it takes for the lambda to show up the change in the fueling that's been added. Okay, so uh, we'll just quickly do this now. So I'm going to add 10%. All right, you see the lambda go richer there. Go back down to the 20 we had. And then, uh, oh, I went to minus 10. That was a huge change. <laughs> Instead of 10 and 20. All right, we'll just do one more up again. And then back to 20. So we've got lots of tests there now. And if we press T, we can have a look at the results. So we might as well just look at this one right here. So what you do, if we go to F6, we can full screen this. And now the uh, tools we use here to look at the data are the same that we use in I2 analysis software. So what we actually want to do is zoom in. And so just using the up and down arrow keys there, you can double click and uh, double click, drag, click as well. But I'd like to see it kind of about that resolution there. So we want to see from the moment the extra fuel went in. So I'm just going to right arrow over. See, we'll just click to 30% extra, sorry, 10% extra fuel. We added in some, added in a 10% extra fuel at that point. And we can actually, the M1 tune has a feature here where we can measure time uh, between two points. So if we press the space bar, that marks the data there, leaves that cursor at that point, gives us our old cursor back. And if we go down to the point, kind of just before the lambda becomes sort of at the top of the curve, somewhere around here, that is, uh, there's a reading that comes here. All right, this is the time distance, the time difference, the delta. That's what that little triangle means. So that is 0 0.621 seconds, so 620 milliseconds. Right, so just remember that number. Let's, um, let's look at it the other way. So if I press the space bar, I can zoom in a little bit more, get this uh, D, it's actually called the datum. D is the shortcut key to get it rid of it. So D to turn it off, D to turn it on. Okay, I'm just going to put this at the right point. So there, right there, we are taking 10% of fuel out. Press space bar. Just tested to see what had happened there. Press space bar and somewhere around, see, somewhere around here where sort of 90% of the change of the lambda has occurred. Okay, all right, so again, it's still... 691 so I'd put in 700 milliseconds there at the table at the table point we'll just test one more okay let's go with this one here all right so here's our point click there's our extra fuel going in space bar and that's about the sort of 90% point there and that's 850 a bit slower.
So you could even go out to, yeah, could even go out to 900 odd milliseconds if you looked at all the scenarios. So F6 again, let's go to our table, all right, and see the setting was actually 940. So we could go to 900, all right, and that's that. So press T, and so we want to do our next point. We don't have to do a lot of these. Uh, if you, the engine's running significantly down in this area, you know, for emissions or it's a streetcar, then go to two or three points that you would use on the street, say something that's similar to 60 kilometers per hour, something similar to 100 kilometers per hour, um, and go from there. And then, all right, and so you keep making a few changes, and what you'll find after you get kind of around 30 or 40 uh, grams per second of exhaust mass flow, then the more mass flow, uh, the more the engine revs and um, burns the fuel, etc., or the more the exhaust mass flow itself, it doesn't get much shorter than that because that actually turns out that this is about the response time of the lambda sensor itself. So you'll find that the, the table you can see here squares off after around the sort of 60 to 80 or 100 uh, grams per second of exhaust flow. All right, now, um, if you want the maths behind all of that, if you click on the closed loop period, if you want the technical terms for it, here's a good example and a nice diagram of the process and what's going on. All right, just a good, another good example of the help that we've got uh, for this kind of thing. All right, so once you've got that period table filled out, you simply, um, because we're in the scenario where we've got a new tune, we want lots of, lots of movement here, just in case we're really bad on our efficiency map. All right, press T, and you can see the closed loop starts again. All right, so the reason you don't want large amounts of trim when uh, when you're running the engine is because if it if if it's got a stumble or a prob problem you don't you know a little hole or something in the efficiency map you don't want the closed loop winding up really really lean or really really rich or, or a lot of trim because you know it's not going to be out by say 40 percent so sometimes especially transients things like that it's not going to get it perfect every time so if the general engine tune is is going to be within sort of 10, 5 to 10 percent, then you may give it something like a 15 percent trim at those upper uh, upper engine speeds. So just in case there's a scenario of, you know, maybe bad fuel pressure and the fuel pressure not measured or something like that. All right, so generally plus minus 40 or 50 percent to get the tune in shape and then knock it back to plus minus 10 to 15 percent. The better you get the tune, the less closed loop you should need in theory. Okay, and that's that. All right, so I think most people understand about how to tune ignition. We've uh, been through in a previous webinar about the process of why you're doing that to get your peak cylinder pressure at the right location. So uh, in most cases, we have you'll have us uh, using the normal ignition timing table and inlet manifold pressure in the normal way. And so you're, you're just going to each point on the map and measuring either on a dyno or somewhere measuring the power. I mean, this is one of the few times you really need a dyno to get this right. Um, and you're effectively going to add ignition until you get your MBT point, which is maximum best torque for the minimum timing. Um, and... Uh, obviously keeping an eye on your target lambda. So again, if you've got closed loop well configured, then uh, you don't, that's something else you don't need to worry about. If you do need to use uh, a throttle-based ignition uh, map, then, and this has been covered in the previous webinar, we convert our inlet manifold pressure mode to be throttle uh, position estimate I'll quickly show you that. All right. So if if this is an engine that has a very naturally aspirated and a very large camshaft, uh, in that case, 
and we want to use uh, throttle based, we come to our inlet manifold pressure mode and instead of it being automatic, which is use the inlet manifold pressure sensor and revert back to this estimate table, we force the inlet manifold pressure channel to run on the estimate and of course the engine is going to run bad so I might as well turn it off. Uh, actually no, it's going to, I'll lose my tune at the same time. Need to save that. Alright, so the, this forces it to use this table here. Alright, so this table is uh, set up for a fallback scenario whereby if the if we lose the map sensor, it falls back to this table and uses this inlet manifold pressure estimate table that we've configured. If you're um, wanting to use throttle based ignition, then you actually want to configure this just as a 2D table. All right, so we're actually going to turn off engine speed, go to throttle position. I'm just going to have two numbers in here. See. In fact, we can clear it, clear the table. Just type in zero and one hundred. All right. Now it really uh, is zero. I hear the engine disliking this intensely. All right, so now the 0% throttle will be 0 kPa and 100% throttle will be 100 kPa. So now on our ignition map, this will, down here, we need to add a sight. It always has to use the inlet manifold uh, pressure axis or inlet manifold pressure on the vertical axis. So just by doing this, we now have throttle based table. Okay, so now it's no longer inlet manifold pressure channel here is now directly linked to throttle. So you can see it jumping up and down there. All right, so that's how you configure the whole setup to be throttle based. That also is of course the same on the efficiency map. This now becomes throttle based as well. So that whole, that would just change their tune completely and is definitely not appropriate for this engine, but that's the process you go through to configure that up for a throttle based ignition and uh, efficiency. All right. Okay, so that's it for this webinar. Again, probably a little long, but I uh, hope you got something out of it and we'll catch you next time.